We are now going to look at um, our seventh um, topic, um, looking at drug um, to drug interactions. So what is a drug to drug interactions? Um, when two drugs are given together, there can be a change in either of the drugs effect um, on the body. Um, and this is a nice um, um, diagram depicting um, a common drug-drug interaction in the liver for drugs that are metabolized through the P450 cytochrome um, system. Um, you have drug B and drug A, which both um, have some level of effect on this um, specific um, enzyme. Um, drug A is a liver enzyme inducer. That means um, its effect is to speed up the enzyme activity, um, which would then metabolize, you know, drug B very quickly, you know. So if uh, these two drugs are given together, this um, drug A would then induce this enzyme, facilitating and fast-tracking the metabolism of drug B, where we end up with uh, minimal exposure to the drug or low drug levels. Um, there might be decreased toxicity, but there will also be um, decreased efficacy um, of this um, specific drug, right? Um, on another note, you find that um, the same, some drugs, uh, liver enzyme um, inhibitors, so they would slow down the function of these um, um, enzymes, um, leading to an increased um, um, drug level um, of certain drugs, um, leading to then um, toxicity uh, most of the time. So most of the drug-drug interactions are caused by an enzyme system in the liver, which is the cytochrome uh, P450, rifampicin. Uh, which we, we now use as part of 3HP is a P450 liver enzyme inducer and may decrease levels of some drugs. For example, your protease inhibitors, um, nevirapine, um, and so on. Um, INH is a liver enzyme inhibitor and may increase the blood levels of other drugs if given um, concurrently. Um, with those drugs. So this is just a, a summary table. Um, it's not, does not include all contraindications, but these are like um, the common ones. And this is rifapentin versus INH, rifapentin as a liver enzyme inducer, isoniazid as a liver enzyme um, inhibitors, where it might increase blood levels of certain drugs, you know, like warfarin. So patients taking warfarin, you might need to regularly, you know, monitor INRs and make sure that they're always within the target therapeutic um, levels. Um, we spoke earlier about, for example, uh, hormonal contraceptives. You can see rifapentin decreases blood levels of um, these drugs. That's why we have a recommendation that women who are on hormonal contraception taking rifapentin should also use um, some barrier methods um, like um, um, condoms and IUCDs um, and so on. So um, use your medicine formulary regularly. Um, when patients have more than one diagnosis, taking more than one groups of drugs to evaluate potential drug um, interactions and the monitoring and switchings um, that we might have um, to do. So most NRTIs in terms of um, rifapentin and ARV drugs, most NRTIs, your tenofovir, lamivudin, abacavir, zidovudin, tricitabine, and so on, and fusion inhibitors do not have any significant drug-drug interactions with rifamycins. Um, um, there is interactions between rifampicin and efavirenz, ratagravir, but it is not clinically um, significant. Therefore, rifapentin can be given with efavirenz or, or even um, ratagravir. Uh, there is no clinical significant drug-drug interactions that have been reported when we use rifapentin with drugs like, you know, abacavir, emtricitabine, lamivudine, zidovudine. So your NRTIs are relatively, you know, safe. Efavirenz and raltegravir-based regimens used with any of these drugs are actually safe to use 
um, with 3HP. Hence the message that TEE, which is the fixed dose combination between tenofovir, emtricitabine, and efavirenz, can safely be used um, um, with um, rifampetine. And then uh, tenofovir, um, alafenamide, which is shortly called TEF, seems like there is some kind of um, 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 drug drug interaction, and you should probably uh, it should, you should probably avoid the use of TEF with rifampicin unless we get um, additional evidence around the implications of that drug drug um, interaction. Um, so rifampicin may also reduce um, significantly the levels of lopinavir ritonavir um, combinations. So you should avoid contaminant, contaminant use or administration of PIs. So let's avoid the use of 3HP for patients who are taking um, lopinavir, ritonavir um, combinations. Um, we've already discussed this one that rifampicin decreases levels of hormonal contraceptives. We should avoid it unless um, the woman, in addition to hormonal contraceptives, also uses other forms of uh, preventions, like your IUCDs, uh, condoms, and, and so on, right? So in terms of dolutegravir, so um, there's a question, can 3HP be started at the same time, SDTG? You know, current evidence sort of supports that uh, if you give the two drugs together, um, there is a, 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 a drug to drug interaction which is not clinically um, significant because even if there is a drop in the, uh, the through concentrations um, of the Lutegravir, the actual um, IC90 levels um, seem to be um, um, at the right drug levels. Um, and most patients would um, then have um, a virological suppression, even if there is a drug-to-drug -drug interaction between rifapentin and dolutegravir. And this is because even if the drug concentrations are reduced up to 50%, there are earlier trials that had shown that dolutegravir, even at lower doses, 10 milligrams per day or 25 milligrams per day, was able to achieve um, effective virologic um, suppression. However, please note that in terms of our current guidelines now in South Africa, um, the data is, is, is um, 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 analyzed and, and reported as inadequate. Therefore, co-administration of 3HP and uh, DTG in new patients, right? A new, new, new patient who's starting ARVs for the first time is not permitted in the current guidelines. Um, the guidelines only allow for the introduction of uh, 3HP in patients who were on ARVs and switched to D. TG, not new patients. So someone who was on an effavorance based regimen and as part of our switching protocols was then switched to TLD, those kinds of patients after counseling and support can be provided um, with DTG and, and 3HP um, at the same time. So pay attention um, to this. Uh, but the, the current evidence, especially from the dolphin um, 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 study is quite positive and as we get uh, more output in terms of evidence from those studies, I'm sure that the guidelines would change or even make specific recommendations on how we can initiate DTG and 3HP in ART naive persons living with HIV and AIDS. So transitioning patients from effavirenz to, to, to TLD-based regimens, yes. Um, effavirenz causes a reduction in, in DTG trough levels. Um, um, these effects may linger for a couple of weeks because remember, effavirenz has a very long um, um, half-life. And then 3HP also further reduces um, DTG levels, which might... Um, affect viral load suppression. So the recommendation is that probably if someone was on a favorite and they switched to DTG and we need to consider them for TB preventative therapy, specifically the short course um, 3HP, we might want to start um, 3HP probably two to four weeks after the switch 
um, was done, and then we should be able to manage our patients um, correctly. So in terms of 3HP and drug-drug interactions, a uh, summary is specifically looking at antiretroviral drugs. Um, Efavirenz is safe, rotagravir is safe, dolutegravir is safe, especially when switching from efavirenz um, to DTG. But for ART naive patients, let's wait for additional data uh, from current studies. And once our national guidelines allow us to initiate new patients, I'm sure a communication um, would follow. Uh, pay attention to protease inhibitors and most um, NNRTIs, nevirapine, relpivirin, um, um, Delaverin and, and all those second, third generation NNRTIs. In terms of NNRTIs, it's only a favorance for now, um, which is safe to use um, with um, rifapentin or 3HP, um, as is the case. Um, in summarizing this session, um, take home points are that women who are using any hormonal contraceptives must be advised to use additional barrier methods to avoid pregnancy. Um, we do not have sufficient evidence to support the use of 3HP in pregnancy. It is therefore um, um, contraindicated. Um, caution should be exercised when co-administrating any drug that could be decreased or increased by NH. So always refer to your formulary. Uh, we can never know all drug-drug interactions, but if we refer, um, we might win. Uh, administration of uh, commonly used antiretroviral drugs is safe. Pay attention to the exceptions, nevirapine, other NNRTIs, and protease um, inhibitors. Also, review what other drugs over the counter medicines and other supplements your patients might be taking because we probably do not, we can never know exactly what might happen. So, um, 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 there's a very nice uh, drug interaction online checkup uh, where these things can be checked. It's important that the patients must be counseled, you know, so that they are able to inform um, us as health providers, you know, every time when they are not feeling well, um, that they are taking 3HP, um, which might interact with some of the drugs. Um, tell us about any other drugs, uh, herbal medicines that they might be taking so that we are able to prepare should we um, or they experience significant um, adverse events. Right. Um, as we near uh, the end of the course, I hope you have managed to grasp something about these important drug-drug interactions. Let's engage on, on the discussion forums, uh, WhatsApp groups, send us an email, and uh, let's see how we, we help each other. I look forward to see you in our next uh, topic, looking at uh, drug adverse events. Thank you.